As American POWs were captured during the Vietnam War, they were thrust into a realm of severe cruelty, confined within rudimentary detention centers. These men endured harrowing trials that pushed human resilience to its brink. They were subjected to starvation, relentless torture, and intense psychological manipulation aimed at crushing their resistance and spirit. From notorious marches through Hanoi to the grim conditions of the Hanoi Hilton, we are going to explore the profound impact of captivity on those who lived through it. As 1965 gave way to 1966, Ho Chi Minh adapted his strategies in response to the overwhelming firepower of the American forces in Vietnam. Recognizing the need for a shift in tactics, the Viet Cong minimized direct confrontations unless they held a clear advantage. Instead, they favored guerrilla tactics, such as ambushes and hit-and-run attacks. This approach coincided with an increased recruitment of North Vietnamese Army soldiers as American military presence expanded. Viet Cong fighters, often initially trained as local guerrillas, received basic military training infused with political indoctrination. Although equipped primarily with Chinese versions of the AK-47 and a mix of Soviet and Chinese machine guns, Viet Cong's most impactful weapons against American soldiers were not firearms, but ingeniously crafted booby traps and landmines. These homemade devices, constructed from materials like old wire and used tin cans, proved devastatingly effective. Landmines and booby traps, including the infamous Punji stakes, sharpened bamboo sticks, smeared with feces and concealed in pits, were responsible for approximately 11% of American fatalities and 17% of injuries during the war. The Viet Cong's adoption of guerrilla tactics shifted the dynamics of the Vietnam War, moving away from conventional warfare. These methods not only inflicted significant casualties in American forces, but also deeply affected the psychological state of U.S. soldiers. The constant threat of ambush and hidden explosives instilled a pervasive sense of danger and unpredictability, undermining morale and complicating military operations. Battling Shadow the Viet Cong, officially known as the National Liberation Front, operated in a manner akin to spectral forces. They maintained no fixed headquarters or concentrated area of operations, making it nearly impossible for U.S. intelligence to pinpoint the leadership or their meeting locations. Communication among Viet Cong members was secretive and coded, often relayed verbally to avoid detection. They lacked any distinctive uniform or insignia, blending seamlessly with the civilian population, which exasperated the sense of unease and suspicion among U.S. forces, who felt as though they were combating phantoms. The Viet Cong's adaptability in movement and surprise tactics greatly contributed to their elusive nature during the Vietnam War. With the arrival of American forces, the Viet Cong innovated with an extensive network of underground tunnels spanning across Vietnam. These weren't just hideouts, but strategic military assets allowing the Viet Cong to sustain operations and launch sudden attacks from beneath the earth. The extensive tunnel systems altered the strategic landscape, enabling the Viet Cong to engage in guerrilla warfare, even if surface territories were captured by U.S. forces. This subterranean advantage transformed the dynamics of conflict, making territorial control fluid and the Viet Cong's presence nearly spectral. The Ku Chi Tunnels, a sprawling underground complex near Saigon, exemplify the ingenuity of the Viet Cong during the Vietnam War. Villagers, aligned with the National Liberation Front, contributed to the expansion of this network by excavating up to three feet of tunnel each day. These tunnels, extending over 200 miles, were more than mere hideouts. They housed everything from arms factories and hospitals to kitchens designed to vent smoke far from their actual locations. This subterranean network transformed the Viet Cong into an almost ghostly foe complicating traditional military engagement for the U.S. forces and undermining standard combat strategies with its vast and covert reach. The mental and emotional strain on U.S. troops during the Vietnam War was intense and significantly shaped by unconventional guerrilla tactics. The landscape itself became a weapon, fraught with hidden dangers such as booby traps that could cause injury or death without direct combat. This invisible threat intensified the psychological toll on American soldiers contributing to heightened fear and even substance abuse among the ranks. Additionally, the National Liberation Front, NLF, leveraged propaganda effectively, using vivid posters that blended nationalist symbols like the lotus flower 
with images of Vietnamese resilience and readiness to fight, blurring the lines between combatants and civilians. This strategy not only fueled the American soldiers' anxiety about distinguishing friend from foe, but also underscored the omnipresent danger of abduction and brutal treatment for those captured by the Viet Cong, further exasperating the fear and stress experienced by U.S. forces. Captured American soldiers often faced grim conditions under Vietnamese captivity, justified by their captors as a response to an undeclared war, thus treating them as criminals rather than prisoners of war. Torture to extract military intelligence or confessions of alleged war crimes was routine. This could involve extreme measures such as tying a prisoner's limbs tightly with ropes to cause dislocation or locking their feet in iron stocks for extended periods. Beatings were severe and frequent, sometimes resulting in the death of the prisoner. John McCain, a notable American POW during the Vietnam War, endured over five years of captivity. After surviving a plane crash, he was initially treated by North Vietnamese surgeons, resulting in permanent nerve damage to his leg. Throughout his captivity, he faced severe physical abuse that left him with a broken arm and cracked ribs, particularly during an intense four-day period of repeated beatings every two hours. At his breaking point, McCain was coerced into confessing to avoid further torture. Despite these hardships, he survived and returned to the U.S., where the physical toll of his imprisonment was evident. He had a noticeable limp and could not raise his arm above his head, remnants of the brutal treatment and inadequate medical care he received. These injuries remained visible throughout his later political career. James Stockdale, who later retained the rank of Admiral, was honored with the Medal of Honor for his leadership during captivity. Also ran as Ross Perot's vice presidential candidate in 1992. Stockdale was held for over seven years, a duration matched by several other POWs. In 1993, the American Heritage Museum in Sudbury, Massachusetts inaugurated an exhibit on the notorious Hanoi Hilton, where many U.S. POWs were detained during the conflict. This exhibit likely includes visual artifacts like the beds used by prisoners. Prisoners often endured extended solitary confinement, lasting months. When they resisted commands or declined to read scripts for propaganda broadcasts, they were sometimes shackled by the ankles to concrete and isolated cells. Lieutenant Commander Robert Shoemaker, who later became an admiral, experienced such conditions repeatedly, often for weeks. Although guards were supposed to provide basic necessities like a bucket for sanitation, this was frequently neglected, leaving him in squalid conditions. Shoemaker, detained from 1965 to 1973, is credited with coining the ironic nickname, the Hanoi Hilton, for the Hoa Lo Prison, where he and many others were imprisoned. The conditions faced by American POWs in Vietnamese captivity extended beyond harsh physical treatment to include psychological strain and nutritional deprivation. They were often subjected to communist propaganda through lectures and broadcasts from Radio Hanoi. Even during physical abuse sessions, the POWs were kept in unsanitary conditions exasperating the spread of diseases and infestations of rats and insects. Their diet was deliberately inadequate, consisting mostly of sparse servings of vegetable soup, stale bread or rice, and occasionally spoiled meat. Environmental conditions were manipulated to increase discomfort. Sweltering heat was paired with hot meals and no ventilation, while cold spells came with insufficient clothing and cold food, leading to inevitable health deterioration like skin sores and other ailments. In a notable display of exploitation during the Vietnam War, American POWs were paraded through Hanoi's streets in July 1966. This march intended to provoke public outrage, indeed ignited violence, with the crowds attacking the handcuffed prisoners, forcing both guards and captives to seek safety amidst the chaos. Noteworthy among the Viet Cong's network of prisons were facilities like Alcatraz, the Briar Patch, Farnsworth and Skid Row, operational through the mid-1960s, to the early 1970s. Among the most notorious was Ho Lo Prison, dubbed the Hanoi Hilton, and the plantation, which was misleadingly presented as a model village. <laughs>